let me go ahead and insert the first Maxwell 2D design which is the, the one that you, I, I found it most useful if you don't have that much of computational power by the way uh, you better go with the insert Maxwell 2D design uh, in many cases based on the symmetry, uh, symmetry in your design you can actually uh, go and uh, insert the Maxwell in 2D design and get almost the same simulation results that you might get in the 3D design with way less amount of the simulation or computational resources and the reason is um, as I said if you are a good uh, engineer you can understand where you have a symmetry in your design and basically you you, you change the 3D design to 2D designs uh, I can go ahead and talk about that later on in uh, different videos but in this video I'm going to focus on uh, the 3D design and inserting a 3D design which is more uh, generic so when you click on that you get a, a empty canvas and as you can see your uh, toolbars is going to change to much more uh, tools that you can actually use for your 3D designs and there are a couple of uh, uh, bottoms that I want to talk about those and the icons here is, are important um, I'm gonna go through uh, a few of those that are more important um, over here in the middle we have all the distribution of the simulations uh, these are very uh, useful but it's too much too much complicated to use uh, and if you're using just a desktop you don't need to not, you don't need to even take care of these things. These are not for you. Um, the first thing that you have to uh, always know is this validate. Uh, when you validate a design, it will not simulate it. It will first check if the model is fine, if all the excitation, which I will explain later, all the boundaries, which I'll also explain later, and all the simulation setup are all correctly defined and the models are correctly modeled and if everything is fine and it's ready for the simulation uh, it will give you all a uh, green check marks which is a good thing to do Just so you basically before any simulation you have to validate your design and if you get the green check marks then you are good to go for your perhaps long time analysis as I said, right next to that, which is gray here because we don't have any model or any setup, we have the analysis icon. When you click on the analysis, uh, if you have one setup or if you have parametric setups, if you have optometric setups, if you have any sort of setups or analysis, it will do all of them at once. So when you press on this bottom here, you basically run whatever sort of analysis you have in your project manager whatever you define here it will start executing by just pressing analyze all that's the that's the whole idea we have here a couple of eye icons uh, these icons are better to be explained later on when we are into a model uh, and we have one model but uh, a very short uh, description about the eye is sometimes some part of your design is on your way um, and it doesn't let you to basically easily maneuver around your structure and manipulate the other parts in order to get rid of them just to not see them you can use the eye button here if you if you name your structures and each part correctly uh, you can easily uncheck the visibility of them and you can basically make them invisible but it doesn't mean that it's not getting modeled it is modeled and it will be simulated but it's not visible that's the only good thing about that which is which comes handy uh, if you are designing a complicated or complex basically structure and the next couple of tools here are divided in three sections these are basically the drawing tools and it's funny the way that Ansoft uh, arranged them together. Uh, if I want to uh, categorize them, 
The first category of the drawing tools are, we can call them 1D, one dimensional tools. It's basically lines and uh, lines with the functions. The second categories are two dimensional tools like rectangular, um, basically polygons, circular or circle, and uh, things like this. And the third category is the 3D, 3D uh, objects that you can draw, uh, such as boxes, cylinders, uh, spheres, and things like that. These boxes here, these basically very, very um, primitive things that you can see here, uh, they are the most useful structures that the Ansoft team realized that people are going to use to model. Of course, these are not going to model everything that you have, and in order to do that, you have to use a couple of them and use Unite or subscri subscribe them uh, from subtract them from each other in order to basically find the right shape. Um, there are many uh, tools that you can uh, make the model that you want exactly the way that you want, but uh, these are the very fundamentals uh, drawing tools that you can find, and it will basically uh, make you to be able uh, to make your very very basic uh, shapes. Um, over here we have uh, the way that your mouse can actually interact in this model window. You can actually ask the mouse to be in the in a plane, or it freely moves in the 3D space. Also, when you're dragging or selecting uh, something, you can ask that the mouse goes in which plane. So, for example, let's say you are dragging some part. Let me uh, uh, put my example using this. Um, right now I'm selecting X and Y. So the X and Y would be, I'm going to use one of the tools that I haven't explained it here. Uh, one of these tools called panning and you can, by clicking on that, you can basically pan around your um, canvas without zooming in or out. You just pan it around. So I'm going to pan it around and then uh, I'm going to go uh, and click on the rectangular drawing tools and while I I am connect, uh, I'm basically selecting the XY pan, uh, plane what will happen is my mouse is not going to move outside this plane and that's that's one thing that it's, it's pretty good because now that your your mouse is freely going in the 3d uh, plane you want to make sure that when you are drawing, your mouse is only in the XY plane. So now if I, for example, start drawing a rectangular, you can see when I'm moving my mouse, this rectangular is getting to form in the XY plane only. If I want to change uh, the plane, I go ahead and, for example, select uh, Y and Z. So what will happen is you can see that the uh, the the grid actually is changing in perspective, which trying to say that now we are in the uh, YZ plane. So now if I start and trying to draw something, you can see that now my mouse is confined in YZ plane and it would not move into any other plane. So now I can easily, for example, um, draw two uh, rectangulars perpendicular to each other as you can see I can move my rotate my view using these three rotate uh, uh, tools um, honestly if you are asking me I, I couldn't find a very distinct distinguish like difference between all these three rotating tools of course one of them is going to rotate around the from the, the center um, of the uh, the model one would be around the center of the axis the Z axis that basically over here one would be the center of the model and what would be basically the center of the screen um, honestly when you're trying to just 
uh, rotate you don't care which one you're selecting the result will be almost the same um, so as I said you can see that these uh, two planes are perpendicular because I select the correct plane when I was drawing um, so I think I explained this part uh, quite a bit um, and then we have a couple of other tools here which I don't want to explain right now uh, the reason is because um, I think I can explain it later when you know more about the, the structure and the models uh, the next thing that we have here is the material uh, by default all these materials are vacuum in the vacuum uh, you if you have a 3d model with, where you have a volume then you can say what's the material of it if you have a 2d design uh, or drawing you can't assign any material to that that's that's one of the uh, basically I don't want to say drawbacks but th that's the way that the answer is designed and uh, so if you had a 3d object which had a which holds a volume then you can start assigning some um, um, material to that as I said by default it's selected a vacuum and whatever you are making in 3d it becomes vacuum automatically if you want to change it you can go ahead and select uh, the select uh, option and you go to a vast um, sea of materials that Ansoft provides for you and and these are pretty accurate materials uh, with very accurate characteristics, EM characteristics uh, that you can just choose from and uh, by pressing OK you basically uh, find it here so uh, the model is basically when you select everything that you are drawing is becoming automatically modeled and when you say non-model uh, whatever you are drawing, let's say I'm drawing um, rectangular here. Um, sorry. And now, because I select non-model by default, when you select on the rectangular, it's not model. As you can see here, it means that it's not going to be part of the simulation. It's like as it's not actually really existent. So it's not here. Um, why then you should have some non-model materials? Well, let's say that you are, in my experience, let's say you want to change some material, but you don't want to go ahead and create it again. So you want to swap between two materials or two parts in your design. Uh, you basically model one and demodel the other one, and then you, you run the simulation, see the results, and then you just remove that by not modeling it and then model the other part back and you see what will happen if you change this for example particular part and that's that's basically the reason that you have this non-model system here and you can have your structure without being simulated um, the rest of the stuff is actually not very important here uh, as I said the last things here are it, they are important but they are not uh, right now uh, in the focus of this tutorial um, there are, uh, the last things are tools for your view and how you can see your view you have pan rotate and zoom uh, I already covered pan and rotate the zoom is basically you can uh, select that and then you can click and start moving your mouse up and down and to get zoom in and zoom out functionality if you don't like this sort of zooming, you can use the window uh, drag zooming, zooming where you just select this with the plus sign magnifying and when you drag it on the object that you want, it will basically zoom it to that window. Same thing for the minus. It means that when you have a, a screen this size, it will, will become your entire screen. So basically zooming out in this way. Uh, when you select uh, the fit to the selecting the fit to the selected drawing, uh, it will basically find the objects that you're selecting and zoom accordingly to just fit 
that object. In this case, the purple object, which means it's selected, is just the box that we draw. So if we uh, click on that, it will exactly zoom on the box. Or sometimes, um, if you want to zoom on just one face, um, and let's say we are pretty up, and then you're just selecting a face, it will go ahead and just uh, zoom on that face. You see the box, part of the box is out of the window, but all of the face is pretty much fit into the windows. So that's that's the whole idea for this red, um, uh, the magnifier glass with a red uh, rectangular in the middle of that. Uh, the one that has no red rectangular, just a regular rectangular, gives you all the components, all the contents in your view. So whenever you zoom that, you press that, you will go all the way up to see all your objects inside your view. There we go. So this is basically concluding the uh, very basic uh, objects and the elements of the ANSOFT. And uh, I was going to cover a few other things, but I think I talked a lot. So I will cut this and um, probably I'll cover that in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching this, and I hope you liked it. If you have any comment, you can put the comments below this video, and I will try to answer that as soon as possible.